Hello everybody and welcome to another How To RA2 where today we're talking about motor stacking. Now this video might be a little bit short because quite frankly there isn't too much when it comes to motor stacking. It's just a lot of precision, patience, and finding the right angle to make something work. But we are going to go through today different uh, methods of doing uh, motor stacking when you would want to do it and what it will look like. So I'm going to walk you through that today. There's a few different ways in which you would want to stack motors that are overlapping, kind of going in each other. There is when you're doing a second set of drive motors, which I did in my build of Chiabot. Link uh, to his episode of BattleBots Reborn in the description. Um, you could do it for if you have a set of drive motors and then you need a weapon motor in a specific spot so it's two different motors crossing over and then there's if you want to build a flip bot or a specific uh, type of bot where it needs multiple motors, multiple weapons, so think of a launch bot, think of uh, Eruption and Apollo and we'll make a crappy version of one of those today and I'll show you just these different methods of how it works. So first up, let's show stacking wheel motors like I did for Chiabot. Now, for something like this, and pretty much for all of these, what you want to start off with is just going into the game normally, not into component freedom, and get one set of motors set up. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So you're going to see me try to line up. The reason you want to start off with um, non-component freedom first is because you want to establish a good starting uh, set of motors, you know? You've got them set in a pretty good spot, they're right at the corners there of the chassis. Um, if you try to do it in component freedom, you're going to have a little bit of unevenness. This at least gives you something to start off with that's nice, solid, uniform, and symmetrical. Once you get your first set in, then you can go into component freedom. Now, you don't want to put wheels on that first set of motors at first, and you'll see why in a second. Alright, so we're back in, and now we are going to apply the second set of motors. Now, um, when you get to a certain point, you're going to see that motor went all over the place, trying to go to different attach points on the motor that's previously there. So this is what I mean when I say you really got to do different angles and stuff really look around and do whatever you can to get it in a good spot. Now it's in a pretty decent spot. If you look, I'll just hit attach there, you can see both of the little nubs, nipples, or whatever, the attachment point where you're going to put your, um, your wheels. They're both sticking out there. They're nice and easy to see. The reason you didn't want to put any wheels on first is so you can see where they're at. So then when you actually go on to put on wheels, let's just do the mini wheels, you gotta make sure you get one on each. So, we obviously got one there. We don't know which motor is on, but that's okay because we can easily find out by then going above the, the, uh, the top like I did there. And now you'll see that the wheels are also slightly staggered a little bit because the motors were slightly off, the wheels are gonna be slightly off, and now you have one wheel attached to each motor. This is exactly what you wanted to get. So again, just showing. I'm getting close, but it's not as close as I'd like, so we're gonna Change the angle. You can get pretty close. Look at how those are touching. You can, I don't know if you can get much closer than that. There is no such thing as perfect. This is one thing you guys need to remember. You will not, I don't think you'll be able to perfectly get the two motors to like overlap exactly. All right, so the next thing you would want to try with some motor stacking is if you wanted uh, a certain weapon to cross over where your drive motors are. So let's say I was making a drum spinner. So, this is where stacking is convenient. Again, you'd probably always want to start by getting your drive motors in. It's probably the best place to start, because then you'd have a hard time getting said drive motor in the corner per perfectly if that Z-Tech was there. But, there you go. It's pretty easy when you have two different motors to be able to stack, because I mean, there's different attachment points at different, uh, they're not all center to the motor, so like, see how to, um, to the left that green point is there. It's not center in the motor. So now we'll get into if you were trying to make um, a flipper robot. So, it's pretty similar again, where if you wanted to put one, maybe two motors to start off with, um, not in component freedom, it gives you a good spot to start off on. And then... It's the same thing, you just find the right angle, make sure everything's lined up well. If that's where you want it, there you go. Now, for certain bots that you have seen on the channel, uh, think of Eruption, think of Apollo, these were both recreations from Doodle, aka the Seaborg, aka Dom, 
the guy that makes BattleBots and Robot Wars crack. If you still don't know what I'm talking about, who I'm talking about, what he likes to do is pretty much four motors for a bot. And you're going to see how much time it takes to line it up well. Just look at all the times that motor is trying to connect. But there you go. Look at that. That is close. Okay, it's a little little bit behind the motor I just put in. No, it's a little bit ahead. It's this one. I'm sorry. Um, but still, they're so close that don't be picky. This is probably as good you're going to get unless um, Dom wants to say anything in the comments that you can actually get closer. I'm not quite sure. I don't actually, I don't think I've made a lot of bots like this. There you go. Four motors all smashed into each other. I guess one thing I can touch up on a question you may be wanting to know is when you would want to stack and when you would not want to stack. So in the case of a flipper like we're making here, you see how long the extenders are. They're each about 120 uh, centimeters. And what we're doing with this is when you have a bot, a flipper specifically, where the motors start in the back here, and the weight of your opponent will be so far away from the pivot point of the flipper. Not only do you want um, some weight ballast in the back, some counterweights, but by having extra flippers, it gives it that extra little about uh, power. Because think, if the end of my finger is the flipper, all the weight's here, and this is the pivot point, my knuckle, that's a lot of strain on a very long piece it's just not going to work. That's why those shorter flippers, think of emergency, they're only like 20 or 40 centimeters, the little extenders, from where the end of his flipper is to the actual motor. That's why he is so good, because it's a short distance, so the motor isn't straining as much. So when weapon stacking comes into play for the flipper is an extra motor doing a little bit extra work to just, it, it eases the workload on everyone. Think if you're trying to move a desk, it's kind of hard if you've got two people, but if you've got four, hey, everyone doesn't have to uh, lift as much of the weight. For the wheel setup, um, you would want to do it for a bot that's really, really heavy. So uh, think of Robot Wars Reborn episode 25 where you saw the house robots, Matilda and Sir Killalot. Those were bots that went way over the weight limit thanks to component freedom, and that's a case where you would want the extra drive motors to give that bot a little bit more pace. Also think uh, Chia Bot when I made Chia Bot because there was so much weight that normal motors, probably even ZTEX, would struggle to help this bot get around. So that's why you want to do it there. And then as for what I showed with the HP ZTEC and Drum Spinner, that's just mainly for positioning. Um, it doesn't necessarily help performance. I guess it can uh, help the quality of the build, which could help performance. But yeah. As you can see, we're getting some decent tosses with this system. I didn't really make the um, end point for each flipper too high. That would probably uh, improve his performance and also having counterweights would improve his performance, but that wasn't really the point of what we were showing here. It was just to show weapon stacking, motor stacking. Apologies, I keep making that mistake and I'm not sure why. But that's pretty much the end of the video. I haven't, I, I struggled for a long time to think of getting enough information for this. So if there's any other questions you have, make sure you leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability and so will some of the other subs that know a lot about this game a lot more than I do. I don't remember what the next episode's topic is. I'll put a little text box down here to, um, to clarify what it is. And that's the end of this episode. Hopefully, hopefully this was helpful. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in episode four.